Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Spectrum Analyzers, DANL. In this presentation, we'll provide a short technical introduction to DANL, or Displayed Average Noise Level, as well as explain the most important ways in which DANL can be improved in modern spectrum analyzers. This presentation assumes a basic knowledge of spectrum analyzer operation. If you're unfamiliar with spectrum analyzers, or if you'd like a brief review, you might want to watch the presentation Understanding Basic Spectrum Analyzer Operation before continuing with this presentation. Spectrum analyzers are primarily designed and used to measure power as a function of frequency. However, even with its input terminated, a spectrum analyzer will still display a trace along the bottom of its screen. This trace represents the noise generated within the analyzer itself. All spectrum analyzers produce noise internally, although the amount of noise can vary significantly between analyzers. This trace along the bottom of our spectrum analyzer screen is sometimes loosely referred to as the noise floor, but the more precise term is the displayed average noise level, or DANL. DANL is defined as the average noise level that is displayed on a spectrum analyzer when the analyzer input is terminated with a matched load. Since noise power is a function of bandwidth, DANL is normalized to a 1 Hz bandwidth. DANL limits the analyzer's ability to measure low level or low amplitude signals. In most cases, signals with amplitudes less than DANL, or signals below the noise floor, cannot be measured, and therefore a low DANL is usually desirable. Typical DANL values for modern spectrum analyzers are usually in the range of about minus 120 to minus 160 dBm, and will vary by both frequency and measurement settings. DANL is a function of several factors, including the analyzer's inherent noise figure, the selected resolution bandwidth, input attenuation and reference level, use of a preamplifier, and noise cancellation. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll cover each of these topics in more detail and explain how each affects an analyzer's DANL. Let's start with noise figure. Noise figure is used to quantify how much noise is added to a signal as it passes through a device or component. For example, if a signal enters a spectrum analyzer and then passes through one of the amplifiers along the analyzer's internal signal path, the amplitude of both the input signal and the input noise will be increased by the gain of the internal amplifier. However, like all real-world devices, the amplifier will also add some of its own internal noise to the signal. Spectrum analyzers contain numerous mixers, amplifiers, and other components that will add noise to the measured signal, and the noise from these components contributes to the analyzer's overall DANL. Noise figure is largely a function of the spectrum analyzer's architecture, and an analyzer with lower noise figure will typically have a lower DANL. As you should already know, resolution bandwidth refers to the filter or window that's used when measuring signals with a heterodyne-based spectrum analyzer. Resolution bandwidth is also the user setting with the greatest impact on DANL. Using a narrower resolution bandwidth reduces the amount of noise energy in the measured signal, and this in turn will lower the analyzer's DANL. Decreasing resolution bandwidth by a factor of 10 reduces DANL by approximately 10 dB. For example, if DANL is minus 80 dBm when resolution bandwidth is 3 MHz, DANL will decrease to approximately minus 90 dBm when resolution bandwidth is reduced to 300 kHz. Reducing resolution bandwidth to 30 kHz reduces DANL another 10 dB to minus 100 dBm, and an RBW of 3 kHz would cause DANL to drop one more time to about minus 110 dBm. Although reducing DANL is generally desirable, note that narrower resolution bandwidths will also increase the analyzer's sweep time, and at very narrow resolution bandwidths, this increase in sweep time can be very substantial. In most spectrum analyzers, the input signal passes through an input attenuator before being downconverted by a mixer to an IF or intermediate frequency. This downconverted signal is then amplified by an IF amplifier. In order to ensure that the signal level is reported properly, the gain of the IF amplifier is coupled to the input attenuator settings. 
If input attenuation is increased, then gain must also be increased by the same amount. This higher gain increases the amount of added noise, and thus also increases DANL. Reducing input attenuation will therefore also reduce DANL. This is usually a one-to-one -one relationship. For example, reducing input attenuation by 10 dB will typically reduce DANL by 10 dB. Although it's possible to set input attenuation manually, this is often automatically adjusted when reference level is changed. Even in cases where changing the reference level does not change input attenuation, DANL may change by up to several dB as reference level is changed. Another spectrum analyzer component that can affect DANL is a preamplifier, which is used to increase the input signal level. This preamp is usually located after the input attenuator. In general, the higher the gain of this preamp, the lower the analyzer's DANL. Care should, however, be taken when choosing preamplifier gain. Increasing the preamp gain too far can push the analyzer into compression, resulting in inaccurate measurement results and or the creation of unwanted distortion products. The preamp should also have a low noise figure. That is, it should add the minimum possible amount of noise to the signal. Another way of reducing DANL is something called noise cancellation. When noise cancellation is enabled, the spectrum analyzer internally terminates its input and measures its own internal noise before switching back to the input connector. This initial measurement allows the analyzer to subtract its own internal noise from the input signal, thus reducing DANL and increasing measurement accuracy. Noise cancellation can also reveal signals that would otherwise remain unseen beneath the noise floor. This improvement can be up to 12 dB in some modern analyzers. Note that in order for noise cancellation to be effective, a spectrum analyzer must be able to first make an accurate measurement of its own internal noise. Throughout this presentation, we've shown DANL as being relatively flat across the span, but there are some cases where DANL may not be flat. Depending on the frequency in the span, steps or ramps may appear when looking at DANL. These can be caused by things such as different hardware passed through the analyzer at different frequencies, or bands, or by frequency response correction, or calibration within the analyzer. Depending on the analyzer and its settings, a non-flat DANL is normal and expected, although this effect tends to be more common or more noticeable on older spectrum analyzers. Let's end with a brief summary. A spectrum analyzer will display a trace even with its input terminated. This trace represents the internal noise of the analyzer and is referred to as the displayed average noise level, or DANL. DANL is a function of both the analyzer's hardware as well as measurement settings. DANL is important because an analyzer cannot normally measure signals below its DANL. Two of the most important factors impacting DANL are the analyzer's own noise figure and the configured resolution bandwidth. The amount of input attenuation and preamplifier settings can also have a significant impact on DANL. And finally, some analyzers have a noise cancellation function that enables an instrument to measure its own internal noise and then subtract that noise from the measurement result. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Spectrum Analyzers, DANL. If you'd like to learn more about DANL, other spectrum analyzer related topics, or about Rodian Schwartz spectrum analyzers, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.